Well, hello again. Welcome again to another episode of Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded. I'm your host, Irv Rish, and you're listening to our show on the internet radio. We've been going through a series uh, of articles on the uh, Holy Spirit, and I think we have three more left, counting this one here. And this one that we're going to be looking at today is the meaning of Pentecost. And this whole series is by Daniel C. Stat, and it's taken from his notes. Well, in Acts 2, 1 through 4, Pentecost is a complementary of Calvary. Without Pentecost, uh, Calvary would have been uh, ineffective to redeem the lost world. Uh, the uh, Jewish feast of Pentecost was dependent on the Passover. It was held uh, 50 days after that event. Had the, there been no Passover, there would or there could have been no Pentecost. Now the following then, that has then been no Calvary, they uh, then could have been no day of uh, Pentecost. I gotta move this over a little bit here for some reason or other. It's uh, a little off the screen here for some reason here. I got to uh, take a minute here to do this. I could have paused, but I'll just bring it over here a little bit more. Uh, I don't know, it's not moving very much. There it is. I think I got it too big as what I have it there. Now I can move it over. There we go. Now I can see the words. <laughs> well, the following then, had that had been no Calvary, they could have been no day of Pentecost. Calvary opens the uh, fountain from which all the blessings of Pentecost flow. The Feast of Pentecost uh, herald the beginning of harvest. The two wave loaves uh, were waved before the Lord. On the day of Pentecost, the beginning of the gospel's harvest was uh, uh, gardened where 3,000 souls were uh, presented to the head of the church. Now, Augustus dis uh, designates the day of Pentecost as the of the Holy Spirit. In other words, it was because of the Holy Spirit that this came about. This concept is in harmony with Scripture. Now, one, the opening of human history. The Father came down to earth for the purpose of man's creation. Several millenniums later, there is another visitor from glory, the Lord Jesus, God's Son. He came to accomplish redemption. And the third thing, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came to earth to achieve man's uh, regeneration. So we have the Father, Son, and the Spirit all coming down uh, from glory. Now the Advent in Acts 2, verses 1 through 16 the sound of mighty winds, clove tongues like fire, miraculous tongues. There was no doubt that he had come. There is no doubt that he has fallen upon the 120 praying disciples by the mighty baptism, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that is. He has formed them into one united body, the church. Uh, were these believers or were those believers uh, excited? Of course they were. They were so excited that, they, that the world thought they were under the influence of new wine. They thought they were drunk, the meaning. And when they were all amazed and were... Uh, Doubtly saying one to another, what means this? Well, the first meaning was 
that it was God's seal on the Messiahship of Jesus. It was God's uh, vindication of Christ to the Jews and was a final blow to them. And secondly, it was the formation of the church into the living orgasm. orgasm. Uh, then uh, there no doubt double the double the less believes uh, let's see here I got to read it again there were uh, doubtless believers before Pentecost but it was not till then that they became the uh, uh, the or organism entirely they the church was to form uh, spontaneously and without human organization. Man had nothing to do with the starting of the church. And the third and last thing is that Pentecost means the uh, possession of the new power by the disciple, giving them for the discharge of their new responsibility. And I just want to add that this is exactly the same power that we have today in the church, the true church of Jesus Christ. The end.